Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had long been to sin to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered, if you do the gift of God, who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no blood, and the well is deep. Where did you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us this well? And with his sons and his flocks drank from it. Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will yet be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water, gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worship on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, Believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what we do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming, and is now here, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in Spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Today is the fourth of our interim of this Sunday, and our topic is worship. I've chosen special prayers and readings on that topic, so let's turn to our bulletins for a close look at how our biblical and theological perspective speak to us about our worship. The comment reminds us that the primary purposes of worship are first to praise and to celebrate God's glory. Second, to provide us with an opportunity to encounter God and to encounter each other more closely. It is a celebration of God's love, which is meant to bring us individually and collectively more of God's joy and more of God's peace. We are always called to extend this experience of God and of God's church community to wider and wider circles of peace. For that, 
we have to be outward looking, inviting, welcoming, and inclusive in our worship and in all of our activities. The Job reading shows us two sides of God. It shows us God's personal nature of being present and available to us. We hear God speaking directly to Job. But God has many ways that God can speak to you and to me. It doesn't always come through hearing a voice through our ears. But it also shows us God's transcendent nature as the creator and sustainer of everything that is. And it's obvious that our human words and human understanding cannot begin to encompass the awe, the majesty, and the mystery of God. And yet, even if we cannot understand God, we still retain the ability to invite God's presence into our ministry, into our worship, into our homes, into our lives. That powerful God of all creation is present there with each and every one. The psalm reading speaks of God's compassion, help, and protection, while reminding us of the belief that we walk in the presence of God in the land of the living, right now, right here in our earthly life. We praise God in worship because of all of the good things that God has done for us. In our participation in church ministry and in worship, not only blesses us, it serves as a witness of him. Psalm talks about having made vows to God. The call of vows that we reaffirm each time we say the baptismal covenant, we will renew those baptismal vows next Sunday on All Saints Sunday. We say in that baptismal covenant that we will continue in the impossible teaching and fellowship and breaking of bread and in the bread. Every time we worship, we call upon the name of God and invite God to us. Every time we worship, we lift up the cup of salvation. Every time we worship, we fulfill our vows in the presence of God's gathered people. We do exactly what this song tells us we should do. The Hebrew reading talks about the word of God, which often means the word of Scripture. But here it's taken to mean something different. Notice that it's a very personal term. It is referring to Jesus himself, the one before whom no creature is dead, the one to whom we must render an attack, the one who is our prayer by the priest. He understands us. He knows us from the inside. He sympathizes with our weaknesses. And he is the one who allows us to approach the throne of grace with boldness. It's amazing. God knows everything about you and me. And still, despite that, invites us to worship in worthiness and with holiness. Approach the holy day as the sacraments serve from it in joyful expectation of receiving God's mercy and receiving God's grace. I hear every time we worship. John's Gospel is an exchange between Jesus and the Gentile woman. And in it, Jesus of 
urge, God's desire to call all people together. And especially those who normally do not share things in common. Think of how that applies to us. Jesus is saying that whoever has the least in common with you and me, they're the people, the very people that God is calling us to find ways to connect with, to share with, to be in relationship with. People that we have the least in common with that is stuff. Oh, it comes from Jesus himself. That's something that each of us has to do personally, and it's something that we have to do together as a marriage. Jesus also affirms that God can be worshipped anywhere and everywhere. It's not the location. It's the way that we worship. It's that we worship in spirit and truth. That kind of worship, that worship in spirit and truth, is what gives life sustaining water. That's the spring that gushes up to our eternal lives. Jesus tells us this is the kind of worship that God wants. God expects this kind of worship. And look at the image that's on the cover of your bulletin. It conveys the idea that worship in Jesus always has to have the participation of the Holy Spirit. See that little Holy Spirit dove flying up above the people here that is? That kind of worship transports us outside of our individual selves into this corporate body, which is the very body of Christ, where together we experience a portent of heaven. You might even want to think of what we do together in worship as rehearsals. We're practicing. We gather here to rehearse for the service of unceasing praise that will be our time when we enter into the nearer presence of God beyond this land of the living. If one of the things we're going to look closely at in our worship event today, and that's the importance of exercising a balanced life of faith. Get faith heart faith, hand faith, and soul faith. We're just kind of faith. Our head faith, that involves what we think about, what we believe about God and about our faith. Activities that help us to understand that. Heart faith has to do with how we feel about God and others, and how we relate our emotions to God and to other people. Activities that help us feel deeper emotions of that. Our hands, faith, involves how we live out our relationship to God and our relationship with other people and how we do things, doing better things. Inspiring us to further action. Our soul faith involves how we journey into deeper experiences of the mystery of the whole. Activities that help us be more and more connected to our true selves, more and more connected to others, and more and more connected to God. Each of these four kinds of things are all important and they're all needed. And they work together with each other, playing off of each other, informing each other, and supporting each other. Making sure that we use all four of them to some degree in a good balance ensures that our faith will have a stronger, more visible, and more lasting impact. 